the number one reason a cat is relinquished to a shelter is because of litter box problems. The cat is eliminating outside of the litter box. And really, sadly, there's quite a number of reasons that this could be happening for a cat. And what I say sadly, because it can take a little bit of effort, though often not a ton of effort, to figure out what is wrong and fix it so that your cat is no longer inappropriately eliminating. But to do that, you kind of have to know what to look for, why, you know, some of the reasons why your cat may be eliminating outside of the litter box so that you can go through the checklist. So on today's episode, we're going to talk about the number one reason that cats are relinquished to shelters, that they have these inappropriate elimination, not properly using the litter box issues. And we're going to talk about the number one thing you need to do as well as that checklist of things to figure out what is going on with your cat so that we can help them to want to use the litter box again and that they don't have to wind up in a shelter because that is, that's the last thing we want for our kitties. And if you are a cat parent, um, have ever been a cat parent, you know what I'm talking about. Or maybe you think you might want to be a cat parent. This is a great session to listen into so that you can properly prepare for when you bring Kitty home. Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. When things are going great, everything's running normally, your cat is going to hop in that litter box, not hesitate do what they have to do, pretty much act like their wild counterparts, cover it up, be done with it, right? And that's ideal. But the reality with cat ownership is that that's not always what happens. And for most cats, at some point in their life, they will have a litter box problem. And so for me, there are two primary reasons for this. There are a couple of ancillary reasons, but there are two primary reasons. The number one reason, well, the number one thing that we need to do with our cat, if they do start inappropriately eliminating outside of the litter box, the absolute number one thing we want to do is, especially if this is a new behavior that is unusual of your cat, is to get them into the veterinarian's office because oftentimes there could be an underlying medical reason that your cat isn't making it into the litter box. Um, It could be a urinary tract infection. It could be um, a blockage. It could be a number of different things. I'm going through an issue with one of my cats now who uh, has hyperthyroidism and he just has to go a lot more frequently. And sometimes you know, things happen with our cats. So the number one thing always hands down we want to do if our cat is suddenly inappropriately eliminating outside of the litter box is to get them into the veterinarian's office. We want to make sure that everything is medically a-okay. Then we can move on to the second thing that is the biggest reason outside of medical underlying medical issues for inappropriate elimination for our kitty cats is just that there is something wrong with the litter box. Now, I say that's a pretty broad term, right? There's something wrong with the litter box. It's a very broad term. So let's break that down a little bit. Number one, did something recently change with the litter box? So did you change litter? Did you change the actual box itself? Those can be big deals for some of our cats. And if we do want to change the litter or if we do want to get a new box, 
and we should get new boxes regularly. Plastic is porous and it holds bacteria. You know, plastic is it's just not going to last forever. Um, side note, I have started, they're expensive. So I'm just doing one every time I buy a whole new batch of litter boxes for my cats, uh, switching them out to the metal boxes because they are easy to clean. Um, though I don't, I personally don't have a problem cleaning the plastic litter boxes, but they're just going to last me longer uh, because just because of the difference in plastic and metal, right? If your cat will accept that, that might be a great way to go, but I digress. If you do want to switch the, your cat's litter or if you have no choice and you have to switch your cat's litter because you no longer have access to it or they stop making or whatever it is, you want to transition slowly. So you want to get what you can of the litter you're currently using so that you can make this transition slowly and slowly introduce that new litter in the existing litter box with the existing litter that they're okay with. So that's, that's a big deal. That's a big thing, right? With our cats changes. And if you are switching to a different litter, understand that texture is very important to our cats. And I know we talk about texture in their food because that is also very important to our cats, but the feel, the litter feel on their paws is also a really big deal to our cats. I have one cat out of all of the cats I have ever owned. Only one cat will use a pellet litter. And it, I wish more of them would because there is one in particular in particular that I really like and I would prefer them to use, but they don't, they just, they just don't. And that is really my number one rule when <laughs> um, dealing with litter box is, is that my number one rule is that your cat makes the final decision always hands down. Um, it doesn't matter really what you want, what you want, what you want to use. Uh, if your cat won't use it, that that's, they have veto power over that. So that is something to look at. Have you recently moved the litter box? Because that can be an issue too. A uh, placement of the litter box. Your cat is going to want, this is a very vulnerable time for your cat if they are um, using the litter box, right? That's a time, especially in a, like if you think about a wild cat, that they are very like vulnerable. So they want to, they need to know they can map out all their routes. They can get out any which way they need to get out. They want to make sure they have they have more than one escape route. So if you have a litter box in a closet or a laundry room, that might not be ideal for your cat. And we'll talk a little bit later on is if your cat has been fine with all of this their whole lives and all of a sudden they're not okay with it anymore. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But making sure that there are multiple escape routes from that litter box. Even if you only have a single cat in your home and you don't have any other animals, you don't have any children that may be chasing after your cat either, Having giving them that freedom, that security of having multiple exits is going to be great. Also, and I just mentioned if you have uh, the the litter box in a closet or a laundry room. These are actually two places I would never put my cat's litter box. And here is why. I would never put it in a closet because that's going to contain the smell. And cats are very sensitive to smell. Even though it is their smell, like totally understandable, it's just too concentrated. They generally are not going to be pleased by trapping in that odor, which is also one of the reasons why I don't prefer covered litter boxes. Though there are some cats that do like covered litter boxes. I, I don't want to completely negate them from the, the narrative, but in general, it's not my go-to. Um, for laundry rooms, think about this: the sudden noise of a washing machine or a dryer can be very scary for your cat. And so if you've recently like moved a litter box into the laundry room and you're like, why won't my cat go in there to use it? Could be that they're freaking terrified <laughs> of these crazy noises, right? Um, heaven forbid they were in their litter box and one of these machines makes a sudden loud noise. That is going to, I mean, that can be very traumatic for your cat. They could have some serious PTSD going on. And I know I'm kind of laughing because if you're thinking about this and seeing this in your head, it's like, oh my goodness, like it's just a washer and dryer. You know that, right? But your cat doesn't. It's just this crazy loud noise that came out of nowhere. 
while they were in the litter box. So they are connecting the two. And that could really cause some litter box aversion as well. Also, if you have recently cleaned the litter box and you have used some chemicals to clean the litter box, like bleach or really anything else that is chemical based that isn't just unscented soap or white vinegar to clean the litter box, that can have a really harsh smell that your cat may not like. Any scents that you use are really not great for our cats. Even if you're using a scented litter, I don't recommend using scented litters, which kind of leads me to the reason why people use scented litters, and that's because they don't like the smell of the litter box. I get that. And that actually leads me into the next reason why a lot of cats do develop litter box aversion, and that's because their litter box isn't being cleaned often enough. I know for a lot of people, they clean it once a day. <laughs> um, I've definitely known people that only clean it once a week. Um, that's not okay. I don't even think cleaning it once a day is okay. This is my personal opinion. Uh, but your cat, again, is the ultimate judge of this. I think for most cats, I mean, you don't want to go use a toilet that is already dirty, that has stuff in it, right? That you can't get out before doing your business. And that's kind of what we're asking our cats to do. And that's really not fair to them. And they oftentimes, especially later in life, will say, I know I've been putting up with this for a really long time. I'm not putting up with this anymore. And so cleaning, keeping that litter box clean is really, really important for me. Anytime I pass by a litter box that is dirty, I clean it. It takes five seconds. And honestly, I, I, you know, I don't talk a whole lot about like personal development. That's not what this podcast is about, but I have been listening to Mel Robbins lately and her uh, high five habit is spot on for this and so many other things in our lives. So basically all you're going to do is, you know, you get that thought in your mind that I don't want to do that, or I have, I'm going to get to that later or whatever it is like, Ugh, I don't want to do that. No, interrupt that thought pattern, count down five, four, three, two, one and act. Do what you need to do. And that's how I treat the litter boxes. I see a litter box. I get it done before I could even do the five, four, three, two, one. It's done, right? It doesn't take very long to clean a litter box when you're cleaning it regularly. So that's another thing, a big thing that we can do for our cats is to keep the litter boxes clean. I know I said we're going to talk a little bit about your cat's been doing fine their whole life. And then all of a sudden, no, this isn't working out anymore. And we will get to that. But before we get to that, I want to give you just a couple of tips on choosing the right litter and the right litter box. So in my opinion, most litter boxes on the market are not big enough for your cat. Your cat should ideally be able to get in the litter box and completely turn around. They should be able to do whatever they need to do, turn in all different directions and have room for their bodies, their whiskers and their tails to do so. This is going to be so much more comfortable for them. And so a lot of times the litter boxes that are on the market to buy for our cats, I would say 99% of them are not big enough to get the job done uh, and give your cat enough room. So sometimes we have to think outside the box and the two crazy cat ladies have quite a few videos uh, about the litter boxes that they actually made, make themselves out of Rubbermaid totes. Um, so that can be an option for you. I have found some really large litter boxes that my cats are okay with. Interestingly, I have one cat who has this tiny little kitten litter box. He will not let me get rid of it. I have tried over and over and over to replace it with a new litter box, a bigger litter box. He, no, that, that, that is his litter box. That is his jam. That's what he wants. He will not use the litter box. So until I have to bring it back out for him. And as much as my heart is like, no, <laughs> that's what he wants, right? I told you, what is my number one rule? Your cat has ultimate veto power. So he gets what he wants and it is a tiny little like kitten sized litter box, but it is what it is. And that, that's what he wants. So that's what he gets. But in general, most cats are not going to be okay with that. Most cats are going to want a 
a litter box that is nice and comfy that they can comfortably turn around in, that they're not hitting their whiskers on the sides, that their tail has room. It's not up against a wall. But they, like they don't want their faces smushed against a wall when they're trying to, to, you know, eliminate. That's, you know, boxes for me, lower sides are better though. Yes, that means that they can kick litter out. Higher sides, I personally like. I have two that are, have high sides, two that have low sides, and my cats get to choose. And I notice which cats use which ones. And so some of them are okay with higher sides. Some of them are not okay with high, high sides. They want the lower sides. Again, your cat has ultimate veto power, right? Uh, then again, we talked a little bit about litter boxes that are covered. Some cats are going to be okay with that. In my opinion, most cats are not going to be okay with that because it traps in the smell. They don't like it. Also, when we think about litter boxes, especially when we have older cats that may not be getting around as well, they may have a little bit of arthritis, we do want to make sure that they have low entryways into the litter boxes. Like if they are going to have to jump up or step up into a litter box and they're having joint discomfort, that is another reason that your cat may stop using the litter box because it's uncomfortable for them to get in or out of it. So do take your cat into consideration and also like their situation. So your cat may have had a high sided litter box for all of their lives. And now that they're getting older, they may have some joint discomfort, some arthritis. We may need to switch to a box that has a really low entryway for them. So think about all of this when you are kind of putting your thoughts together on what could be going wrong. Why is my cat not using the litter box all of a sudden? We also, I've mentioned a little bit about your cat being the ultimate decision maker on what kind of litter to use. For me, I want to use the closest that I possibly can get to nature. If I could just use dirt <laughs> or sand, that would be wonderful. They're not clumping, so that doesn't work for me in you know, my season of life, but I use as close as I can possibly get to natural. And we don't want a bunch of, you know, if you look at the ingredient label and it's a bunch of stuff you can't pronounce, that's not good. We don't want any fragrances, right? That can be an aversion for your cat as well, not to mention the negative health side effects that these chemicals have. So for me, as close to nature as possible, but again, your cat is the ultimate decision maker. So as, wh whether we're talking about the type of litter or the texture of litter, the smell of the litter, your cat is the ultimate decision maker. Choose what is going to work best for both of you. So as you can see, we've covered so many different things that could be going on with a litter box. And there are a couple of more that I do want to cover with you, but I do want to mention really quickly, we never, ever, ever want to punish our cat for mistakes outside of the litter box. Because as you can see, there are so many reasons, real legitimate reasons that your cat could be experiencing discomfort or whether that's medical or emotional or just physically trying to get in and out of the litter box. It, they're not doing this on purpose. Your cat is never eliminating outside of the litter box to spite you, but that is not a thing, right? So don't raise your voice. Don't yell. Don't rub his face in the accent. That's like the last thing we absolutely want to do. You're going to frighten them. You're actually going to create more aversion. And it's really very detrimental to the bond that you and your cat have, hopefully have, and really can create a lot more aversion to the litter box, which is just going to cause more problems. That's It's not good for either one of you. So one more thing I do want to mention about litter box aversion, and this may not apply to everybody, but probably applies to quite a few people because generally you don't just have one cat. We have a multi-cat household. And sometimes our cats can bicker. <laughs> They're like people, right? They all have their own personalities, their own character. And sometimes our cats can have not so great relationships with each other. And sometimes these relationships can be good and bad and go back and forth. And sometimes one of our cats can be bullies to another one of our cats especially when it comes to resources. And the litter box is a resource for our cats. So 
do be sure that if this is something you are suspecting that is happening between your cats to give both of your cats their own individual space and alone time so they can have their own litter boxes in their own spaces where they can be completely com confident in using their litter boxes while you are working on behavior modification to clear up whatever is whatever spat is going on between your two cats. Um, and then one more tip that I do want to have while we're talking about a multi-cat household is that you always want to have at least one more litter box than the number of cats you have. So for me, currently, I have four cats. I actually have six litter boxes right now, but the minimum I would want to have is five. So the number of cats you have plus one is the minimum number of litter boxes that you want to have. And we don't necessarily want to clump them all together in one space. That's, you know, some cat behaviorists will tell you that for your cat, if they're all clumped together in one space, to them, that's really only one litter box because it's one place that they're going. So depending on the cat, you might want to move them around, have them in different areas of your house. Certainly, if you have a multi-level home, you're going to want to have to have at least one on each level of your home. But so those are my big, big tips for litter box, inappropriate elimination outside of the litter box for your cats. And I can't I can't tell you in strong enough terms that the absolute number one thing that we want to do is get our cat into the vet's office to get checked out because there are a myriad of health reasons that, you know, underlying medical issues that could be going on for your cat. Some of them, including um, feline lower urinary tract disease, of course, just a UTI could be causing it as well, cystitis. Um, obstruction of the urethra, which is very, very serious, diabetes, cognitive dysfunction, and as I mentioned earlier, hyperthyroidism. So stress, again, is another reason that your, your veterinarian can sometimes help you with, especially if you're dealing with a veterinary behaviorist. But these are all so very important. We always want to rule out any underlying medical issues before we start moving on to behavioral issues. So those are my top tips. The number one thing you want to look for anytime your cat is having litter box aversion problems is underlying medical issues. And then we can move on to what's wrong with the box, right? So I hope this episode was helpful for you. Please share it with all your cat friends. If you're not already following the podcast, do so. And I can't wait to hear uh, what you have to say. What do, Did I miss anything? Do you have anything to add? I know I could probably go on about litter box, top, you know, the topic of litter boxes for hours and hours and hours, but this is a very concise, like, what do I look for when this is happening? This is what you want to look for. So I can't wait to hear from you on social media. Thank you again for being here and following the podcast. I appreciate each and every one of you. And until next time, bye guys. Oh, 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 oh.